In part three of the volumetric tutorial, we'll be discussing porosity, hydrocarbon saturation, and formation volume factor. Porosity is an important part of the volumetric equation as it represents the fluid storage ability in the net reservoir rock, namely after excluding non-pay. Reservoir rocks are made up of solids and porosity. Wireline logs tend to read the total porosity which could be hydrocarbons, non-clay water or free water, and clay-bound water. Also, many rocks have intragranular porosity, which is not effective. So they're isolated pores. They could be in sandstones or in shales. These are very hard to determine from wireline logs or core analysis, and usually has to be done through thin section analysis. For the volumetric equation, we like to use what's called the effect of porosity, which is usually where we exclude the clay-bound water. Log porosity values calibrated to core measurement lead to a better volumetric estimate. And the volumetric formula uses a mean porosity value. If a zone's porosity distribution is skewed, then a median value should be used. Porosity is also used in the water saturation estimate. Thus, porosity and water saturation are correlated. According to Ma, porosity and water saturation are treated independently in the volumetric equation, and this can lead to an underestimation of the in-place volumes. Hydrocarbon saturation, SH in the volumetric equation, represents the fraction of the pore space that is taken up by hydrocarbons. If we look at this example reservoir rock, it contains sand grains, oil, free water, clay bound water, and capillary bound water. Using wireline logs, we can measure the water saturation, and SH is equal to 1 minus the water saturation. Water saturation is difficult to measure from wireline logs. Let me explain. First off, it's best to measure the water saturation from special core analysis. These are rare. So we use different equations to estimate the water saturation from wireline logs. If we look at the Archie equation, for example, it contains six terms. The resistivity of water, the true resistivity, the effect of porosity, A, M, and N. A, M, and N can only be measured from core rock. So we talk about its tortuosity, cementation, and saturation exponent. The estimation of water saturation carries a large amount of uncertainty due to the large number of terms in the equation. Further, water saturations can vary with lithology. Different equations are there for clean sand, shaly sand, thin beds, and carbonates. Also, water saturation co-varies with porosity and permeability and proximity to the hydrocarbon water contact. Wettability can also be a factor where oil wet systems have higher hydrocarbon saturations. As a general rule, siliciclastic rocks are usually water wet, whereas carbonates usually have oil or mixed wettability. Formation volume factor accounts for the difference in the hydrocarbon volume between the subsurface and surface conditions. So, changes in temperature and pressure conditions between the subsurface and the surface conditions lead to changes in this hydrocarbon volume. Oil shrinks as the solution gas exolves from the oil. We call this B sub O sub I. And gas has a tendency to expand under the decreasing pressure and temperature conditions, and this is called B sub G sub I. Once the formation volume factors are applied in the volumetric equation, the volumes are then reported in stock tank barrels of oil and standard cubic feet of gas. Formation volume factors are a function of the fluid's physical properties. For example, composition, gravity, viscosity, compressibility, temperature, and pressure. Laboratory PVT studies of produced hydrocarbons are ideally used to determine the formation volume factors, but these are not usually available. Based on field observations, such as GOR, fluid gravities, and separator pressure and temperature conditions, 
Oil correlations can be used to estimate the formation volume factor. AAPG's wiki page offers a quick method for determining B sub O sub I based on GOR, and they offer this equation. And usually the B sub O is usually a number between 1 and 2 and can become higher as we get into volatile oils. There is no quick method known for gas formation volume factors, B sub G sub I. Standing and Katz 1941 offer a method that requires only knowing reservoir temperature, reservoir pressure, and gas composition. And these terms are usually readily available. Standing and Katz developed a nomogram that determines what the compressibility factor of the gas is, which is the primary ingredient in determining B sub G sub I. The standing and Katz methodology for estimating B sub G sub I will be demonstrated in the companion Excel workbook.